Okay, so we'll talk about start with the Catalan uh, automation, test automation today and uh, tomorrow. We will go through uh, Ruby Cucumber uh, automation. I'll show you. Uh, you will get some hands on on the Cucumber side and uh, so forth. But let's talk about what is Catalan um, and how we can use uh, automation for our uh, purpose. <clears throat> Uh, before I start, uh, I'm hoping everybody has installed software, right? I think most of you have. Um, and then as we go, I'm sure we will run into some issue and we will we'll figure it out. Okay. Give me a second. Okay, this thing doesn't work, which is okay. <clears throat> so what is automation, right? Um, <clears throat> so by definition, I'll let you guys read, uh, read for a minute. Okay, and then we'll talk about it. So automation is nothing but the use of tools and strategies uh, that reduces the human involvement or interaction. Okay. Uh, for unskilled, repetitive, or redundant tasks. Um, <clears throat> does the definite definition make sense? Okay. All right. So let's let's uh, see what uh, what we do here. Okay. Give me a second here. Okay. So I'm going to open a notepad. And we'll start with uh, our SDLC. Okay, let's let's talk about uh, SDLC. Okay, so we have different phases in the SDLC planning phase, right? We have requirements uh, slash analysis. We have design. Uh, what else is there? Implementation. Okay, so I just want to make sure uh, implementation or coding, right? Uh, then after that, yes. that thing, yep, okay. Uh, and then uh, what, what is that? What comes after testing? What comes after testing? Okay, so acceptors, right? And uh, finally, maintenance. maintenance. Okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> Let's talk about uh, what we can do for the automation side of things for any of these phases. Okay, so is the auto, does do you guys think the automation we can automate any activity in the planning phase? Okay, and why not? Because you guys don't you you guys are not even there in the planning phase. It's a project manager and whoever, so no auto automation here. How about uh, requirements analysis? Can we do any automation or some automation in requirement and analysis? Okay, o why not? Okay, well, any automation. Think about what you guys do, right? Activity wise. Um, so you guys review the requirements, like review and test plan type of things. Those are the two major activities that you do from the Automation, I mean, uh, from the activity standpoint. Can any of you, I mean, uh, can we automate any of those things? Review, can you, okay. So potentially right now you cannot, but um, there are certain tools available now, I mean, which uh, can help you to go through certain things, but uh, no, we cannot automate, no automation here, right? Okay. How are in the design? Again, what activities that you do? Just a high level? Yeah. Review, uh, review design, and uh, test plan, right? Revise test plan or whatever update test plan. No automation here. Okay. Implementation coding. Anything you can automate here? 
think about what you, what you do in the implementation coding. As a QA, what would you do in the implementation phase? Does anybody remember? What do you do? Uh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, one one person at a time. Yep, online. Creating test scenarios and cases. Okay. So writing or creating test scenarios, test cases. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> So anything you can automate here using any of the tools? Yes, no? No. No, no. okay. So no automation, okay, that's fine. No automation here, okay. All right, so let's come back to the testing. So what is that you do in the testing phase? Yes. <clears throat> no, but what is that you do in the testing phase? What activity is at the high level uh, that you conduct as a QA? Execution. execution. Okay, execution, test execution, right? Okay, Find test new, execution. Finding defects. Okay, so defect uh, management, right? Defect management or finding defects, uh, bugs, and those things. Anything else? Reports. Okay, so bug reports, etc. Okay. Okay, so how about if you look at your activities here and uh, see what, what is that you can automate here? Can you automate any of this thing? Test execution. So you can do yes to this, right? Anything else? Anything else? Yeah, you can automate bug report. I mean, it's a part of the automation. Uh, it can generate some reports, right? What about defect management? Can you create the defect automatically? Well, like uh, able to execute test execution, yes, there may be defect management also. Right. Mm -hmm. So generally, um, you can automate basically defect management or defect process as well. You can uh, your automation software allows it. Then you can automate auto you can create the defect automatically as part of your test execution. And then you look at it, see what failed, you can generate automation. Um, you, so you can automate that part, defect management. So in the software typically has some type of bug reporting capability. Um, you can uh, basically uh, automate that portion as well, right? So defect management, uh, it's kind of like a both tasks are combined, right? Uh, it goes uh, both uh, together, defect management and slash bug report. Okay. All right. So this phase, you can automate certain things. How about the next phase? What are the activities that you do in the acceptance? <laughs> Anything that you guys do in the acceptance? What, what activities would you do as a tester or QA? What is um, and who, who does the work here? Let me ask it that way. In the acceptance phase, what is your role as a QA? To provide the support. Okay, so support, acceptance testing, right? Test. Now, who does the acceptance test? Users, users. right? Business users or users. Okay. Now, what else you do? So support, when you say support, right? So what what activities would you do as part of your role? When you say support, but what does it mean in the activities term, in terms of activities? If you, if you report about, do the retesting again and then. Okay, so retesting, is that what you're saying? Okay, what else? Reporting, if there is a really a bug which... Reports, anything else? Defects, right? Because you have to open a defect if the user says, yep, something is not working, you 
you will go and open a defect. Now, the, from the automation standpoint, can you automate any of the activities that you do? Yes, yes. Who is executing the test? Is the tester executing the test here? Yeah. User, right? So, if the users are executing, probably you're not going to be able to automate their, their execution portion, right? So in the bug reports that you are creating, that would be a manual process because if something doesn't work, they will come to you and uh, you will say, yep, it's not working properly. Let me go ahead and open a defect. So pretty much you're not going to be able to automate any of these things, okay, in the acceptance phase. All right, what about the maintenance side of things? Can we automate anything? Think about the activities, right? Uh, that you do in the maintenance. Can we automate any of those things? Does anybody remember what activities you do? Anybody? You guys can think I sell to early in the morning. Um, <clears throat> So maintenance, so after acceptance, right? Uh, you release the software into production and then the maintenance starts. So small defects, user reports, uh, you probably will do some bug reporting and some minor testing to see if it's really bug or not. But it's, again, the testing will happen in a different environment, right? To support uh, that. But you're not gonna be able to do any kind of automation, okay? So bug reporting, but no automation in the maintenance phase. Okay. Okay, so we looked at all these phases, right? Now, by the way, where do you spend most of your time as a QA? As far as goes, right? So 90% of the time you spend on requirement analysis, you implementation coding, where you create the test cases. Uh, and probably acceptance and uh, maintenance and all kind of things, right? So 10% of the time, or maybe 20%, I would say, let's go with 20, 80% of the time, you do all the activities that you cannot automate, okay? 20% of the activities, which is part of the execution, that's on that portion you can automate only, okay? So when people are saying the automation jobs, there are not manual tester jobs or anything. That's not true, okay? Because the eighty percent of the activities is still manual. Okay, I just want to make sure you understand that part. Automation. Now, why do we apply the automation here? It's a time-consuming, repetitive process, um, <clears throat> and. Uh, if it takes you maybe 30 minutes to execute one test case end to end, creating the application to going through the lender approval process with the click of a button, you can execute that in maybe 10 seconds. Okay, so that will free, free you up to do other activities that you have to do. So it's a productivity as well at the same time. Okay, so that's where most of the automation comes there. And as part of the testing, uh, so you are doing the functional testing, you are doing the system testing. What else you are doing? Well, so where is the repetitive activity comes? If you are going through testing cycle, what, what which activity is the most repetitive? Can you think of that? So what type of testing in terms of testing? What is the term? What, what is the testing called? That is repeated. Regression testing. Regression testing, right? Um, because system testing, so when you are automating now, what activities you can automate? You're not gonna be able, if you are, if somebody gives you a new module, lender or management and say, okay, um, let's automate this. For the first time, if they give you, you still have to do the manual testing. Okay, so only probably 50% of the time, uh, what are test cases that you write, you can automate, not 100% of the test cases. 
your manual testing skills, you still need to do. You need to still apply all the manual steps to test it out first. Now, when you are executing next time, if you are if you have automation test written, then you can just execute the same test case, uh, assuming the functionality um, is working. Uh, basically, not assuming, but you need to make sure the functionality works even after the code changes. Okay, so that's where the regression testing comes here. So specific types of testing. So system tests are functional. No automation here. Okay, you still have to do manual, basically. But now when we talk about the regression test, this is where you will apply the automation because this is where you will re-execute the test cases maybe ten times throughout the uh, testing process. Okay. Does it make sense? I mean, uh, where because this is important, you need to understand the uh, distinguish. Well, I mean, uh, difference where you apply and um, why you want to apply. Okay. So, is everybody clear? Uh, right. So let's come back here and let's take a look at. So let's look at, look at the definition here. So automation is use of tools and strategies that will reduce human intervention or interaction in unskilled, repetitive and redundant tasks. Now, when we say unskilled, it's no brainer. You are just following the steps, right? I mean, you are not using any logic. You want to make sure whatever is written in the step, that's what I'm seeing in the output or outcome. And you just are comparing. Repetitive and redundant, basically, so you are following the steps and make sure, uh, and you might have to execute 10 times. So it will make it repeated. That's where the tools um, and strategies, right? So tools are, there are various tools in the market. We'll take a look at a few of them and uh, see what those are, okay? Uh, so you can have the automation using the different tools. Now, going to the actual, how we do it, right? What is automated software testing? Okay, so essentially what we are doing is, so now we, we know we have to apply the tool to create the automation. Now, what, what we do as part of the testing, we go through step-by-step -step instruction, compare the actual vision with the expected outcome, right? So tool needs to do the same thing. You need to automate that basically. How do you compare? Execute. So basically, it's execution of tests and comparison of actual outcomes with the predicted outcome without human intervention. That, that's, so that's what the automation testing tool is supposed to do. Now, it's uh, achieved by the autom uh, automation testing tool. Um, essentially, what it's doing is it's simulating the real user. Basically, that's what we are, the tool will do the same thing, whatever you are doing. Then, okay. Now, how the real user works, how, how we do actually testing, right? What, what, what do we focus on when we are executing step-by-step -step instruction? We actually go to the page, right? And we visually say, okay, we need to enter username, password in this box, and I need to click on something. So probably 95%, 99% of the time, actually, you either enter some data or you click on something. That's, that's the activity you are doing when you are doing your manual testing. Okay, so perform some action on part of the page, and um, as I said, ninety-nine percent of the time, you will you will either click on something or you will input some data, and then finally you will compare expected versus um, actual output. Sorry, sharing and reporting. Yes, yes. You see it, the. Zoom control panel on the bottom. Oh, I, 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 I okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So uh, automation works the same way. Okay. It, it, its job is to simulate real user. So when you are using the automation tool, 
you have to instruct the tool to identify what elements you want to interact with. Okay. And then you will say, okay, I went through the steps, I inputted the data, I click on something. Now you instruct the tool to identify why it passed or failed. So compare expected versus actual. So again, tool will not do everything for you. You have to instruct the tool to do what you want uh, as outcome. Okay, so as an automation tester, you are the one actually providing instruction. Now this time you are using a tool, you are following the, uh, you are capturing the instruction in the tool, whatever you are doing manually, same thing you will follow and you will use it in the tool. And then you will execute and then if something changes in the software, let, let's say you got a new software, something changes, then the test will start failing, right? Because that, and then you will start create the defect, you will follow the defect management process, you will open a defect and uh, work through it, okay? So that's, that's how it works. Now, most of the tool uh, are able to uh, play back. So how do you give the instruction to the tool? We will see it when we actually use the catalog. How do you give the instruction to verify certain things on the page? We'll take a look at it in the catalog, right? Again, if you don't have manual test case written, remember, when, when, um, what, what do you need when you are executing, your, uh, when you are actually doing automation? You need a working software. If you don't have working software, can you write your automation test? You probably cannot, okay? Because you are recording the test um, on a working software, and when the as part of the regression test, right? And when something changes, you will re, re, run the test, and it will identify the difference for you. Okay, so that's how most of the tools work. Okay, and uh, we will go through, I think, a certain thing. But remember this concept. Okay, you need a working software to um, do the automation. Okay. Any question uh, on this thing? how the automation in general it works, how, how it works uh, conceptually. Okay, so let's take a, take a look at the different tools that's available in the market. Okay, now in, in the, uh, I uploaded the new slides, uh, the module 16, it's online, okay? So the same slides are there, uh, you may not have it in the binder. Okay, so you probably heard about certain tools like a selenium, uh, water, and all kind of things, right? So they are open source tools. They are free, basically. Um, <clears throat> they work well with a variety of uh, programming languages. Now, if you want to do, if you want to master the automation, you have to learn the programming. Okay, because all. all all as essentially the all the tools will require some programming knowledge. Uh, <clears throat> but Selenium and Water, they both are um, open source free tools, um, and um, you can uh, code it. It requires pretty much uh, learning at least one programming language, which is either Ruby or Java or C sharp or something. If you want to learn Selenium or Water. Uh, <clears throat> now, all other tools, uh, Microsoft, uh, VSTP, U UFT, uh, Test Complete, Ryzen, Test, Tosca, uh, or uh, Catalog, they, they are um, not open source. They are by certain vendor. Uh, those tools are created by, uh, they are software, just like uh, what you install, right? Uh, so they are software and it requires some type of licensing on your machine for selenium or water doesn't require any licensing. Okay, they are free. So that's that's the biggest difference between those two and remaining tools. Now other tools require some coding. So VSTP from Microsoft was your uh, coded UI test. Uh, that, that's what the tool name is. It requires either VB or or C sharp programming. Uh, UFT, uh, which is uh, which requires actually VB script as a programming. Test complete uh, requires, it supports a bunch of programming, okay? So test complete uh, from Smartware, this is the tool I'm talking about. It, you can use any, if you know any of this programming, then you can uh, 
free HR automation test. Uh, Tosca is a codeless automation tool. You don't need to learn any programming. Okay. But it is very expensive. Uh, this tool is uh, very expensive. Uh, other tools are have some licensing as well, uh, like Catalon. I think it's $1,800 um, per developer or per tester. Okay, that's uh, that's a license for Catalon. <clears throat> other, this, this guy is a very expensive. I think uh, UFT is about $2,500 to $3,000 uh, for one license as well. Uh, <clears throat> now, UFT used to be very popular. Um, I think it's uh, going away from the market because there are so many free tools out there in the market. Company don't want to pay for $2,500, $3,000 per QA, right? So that's the reason this guy is uh, going away. But they, they were first, uh, first in the market back in uh, basically 2000s, they came out. And that's why a lot of company adopted that tool. Same thing, Coded UI, Microsoft One, it's going away. I mean, it's there, available with the Microsoft software, but not many people use that. Okay, So these days, either Selenium, Water, uh, because it's free, you don't pay any money, but you need to master the programming. That's why you probably will hear Selenium uh, and those things a lot. Catalan is a codeless automation tool as well. Okay, even though you you, it's, it has a Groovy programming. The programming language it supports is a Groovy, which is more of a scripting, but you don't need to learn any programming in order to use Catalan. So they're both, both of these tools are codeless automation tools. Okay, that means zero programming. You can write your advanced level automation tasks using the Catalan or Tricentis Tosca. Okay, uh, it's complete. Uh, you can, uh, in UFT, you, if you know the script, then you can write some advanced level. You can create basic tests with uh, both the UFT and test complete without any coding knowledge. But if you, when you go to the advanced level, yes, you need to learn, know, know some uh, programming or scripting language. Okay. So in this, uh, today we'll talk about Catalan. And then tomorrow we'll, we'll cover Selenium and water. Uh, obviously you don't know programming because it, uh, that those tools will require programming. So I'll show you the overview, how those tools are different than the catalog. And you, you will clearly see uh, they are very different and so forth. Any question on these tools? Okay. Um, <clears throat> all right, so if you don't have a question, then we can dive into the catalog side of things um, and uh, see how the tool works or how we can leverage the actual tool. Okay. All right. Um, okay. All right. So I think uh, let's get to the actual tool here. Okay. Oh, I want more slides. Now, which test cases to automate, right? I think we already talked about uh, this thing. Uh, <clears throat> regression testing, we already talked about, right? Um, so it's a uh, repetitive execution. So we can automate regression testing. Now there are other kind of like a stress and load testing or performance testing, it, you can automate as well. Now, what is a stress testing or load testing? Do you guys remember the definition? <laughs> to see um, beyond a certain level how much the system can take the load. Okay, take the load, right? Uh, so what does it mean, right? So if the R floor has a 50 simultaneous user requirement, you're not going to ask 50 users to log in at the same time and, and see if it works, right? You probably will use some type of tool to simulate the user load, okay? So, and see if it Arflow will, let's say that Arflow is supposed to return, so the page in three seconds, when you click on submit, it's supposed to go to the next page and uh, within three seconds. So you can see during the simulation, load testing, uh, stress testing, you can also do the performance testing, see how much uh, performance uh, is giving, giving you. 
Okay, so those things you can automate, but they, it's a different tool. Different types of tools are used, and different types of scripting is used. Okay, so I'm not sure if you heard the terminology wind runner, load runner. Those are specifically designed to do the stress testing, load testing, performance testing, and so forth. We're not going to cover in that class because we can't even get the tool to actually do anything. Um, but if you are interested, I'll send you the video on the JMeter, which is similar tool where you can uh, run some type of simulation for the user on the side. Okay. Uh, but JMeter, you can also use it for stress load testing, performance testing. But it requires some scripting language knowledge. Okay. Uh, that's the reason we are not covering in the camp. All right. Um, <clears throat> okay. So, so that's the theoretical part. So let's, uh, if you have, if you don't have any question, then we can actually dive into the tool, build our first test and uh, start working through it. Okay. So let me go here. Um, 